uh, on the European Democracy Action Plan. Uh, dear Vice President, thank you so much for having accepted our invitation to debate the European Democracy Action Plan with the representatives of cities and regions uh, across of Europe. Our union can only be a union of shared and respected values. Local and regional authorities as well as their elected leaders have an important role to play, not only to safeguard and respect democracy, but to promote it. it. Human dignity, freedom, democracy, equality, the rule of law and human rights these are not only the values on which our union is founded, but a very clear way, very good instruments of assessing if in each and every community or country across Europe, deeds follow words. Let me express the importance of involving regional and local leaders in this common endeavor. Being locally elected officials, the champions to strengthen our democracy, the equality and the respect for human rights across the EU. The faster we take action, the more inclusive we are in allowing local actors to take initiatives, the greater the chance we have of preventing issues. Let me stress three aspects in which the European Democracy Action Plan has a very straightforward approach to the challenges we have ahead. Empowering citizens to make informed decisions and what this relates to fighting disinformation, fighting for press, liberty, the second, promoting the democratic participation. Promoting the participation and the interests of citizens in the democratic process. And third, protect, protecting elections integrity. We also appreciate the capital importance of the rule of law culture. The respect of which is fundamental for the recovery to happen and the cohesion policy to display all its potential in our regions. Dear Vice President, together with the COR's delegates to the conference, we will represent this will to team up in order to achieve our common goals. We stand ready to support and the European Commission's priority, a new push for European democracy, and therefore, in our opinions to be adopted today, you will find a number of concrete proposal, proposals. Madam Vice President, the floor is yours. Welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vice President, Honorable Committee of Region Members. Uh, can you hear me, please? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. We it's cannot great. see you yet, but we can hear you. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter so much that you don't see me. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. It's a great pleasure for me to speak to you today on issues of such importance uh, to the resilience of our democracies. Thank you for giving me a chance to present the European Democracy Action Plan, uh, which uh, we adopted uh, in December after a very clear uh, to say, finding that uh, democracy will not defend itself, that we have to work uh, to protect and defend democracy, that it's not automatism, that it's not the end of history, that we simply have to devote more energy to protect the democratic processes. And uh, I hear I mean also include, uh, the, the free and fair elections, uh, which are absolutely important for continuation of European democratic uh, society life. Uh, we uh, are 
now in a very clear moment our times call for decisive actions to support democratic processes and these actions will only be effective if accompanied by uh, clear political will to raise public awareness strengthen collective resilience and protect our democracies in uh, and european values and we are under the fast-paced digital evolution. We are called to ensure a favorable environment for an inclu inclusive, respectful and pluralistic public debate. It remains, however, acutely clear that it is difficult to uphold fundamental rights and democracy in a largely unregulated online space especially when the business models of social media platforms do not always encourage free and open debate. And also the coronavirus pandemic has affected democratic processes. It has dominated the political debate and has accelerated the digital transition, which is revolutionizing how we do democracy. Now, I sometimes say that we are digitalizing uh, democracy and we have to democratize digital. So I think that this transition is, is very clear and demanding for everybody. Uh, Coming back to digital space, allowing polarizing messages and unreliable information to be spread easily can limit our perspective and hamper our ability to make informed political decisions, which has a dangerous effect on our democratic societies. With a long-term vision in mind, we elaborated on the European Democracy Action Plan to better protect our democratic systems. The plan addresses uh, the areas in which our systems and citizens are most vulnerable by committing to, measure, uh, to measures to ensure free and fair elections, to guarantee media free freedom and media pluralism, and to fight disinformation. And I think you have seen the plan. So now let me give you an update of where we stand with the implementation almost seven months after adoption. Time is running incredibly quickly. So first on free and fair elections. To protect the integrity of elections, the Commission is working on two legislative proposals that uh, will adopt uh, that will be adopted before the end of this year. The first one relates to online political advertising. We are convinced that people must know why they are seeing a political advertising, who paid for it, how much, what micro-targeting criteria were used. To this end, the Commission will propose legislation on transparency of sponsored content in a political context. And we will pay close attention to how micro-targeting criteria and other techniques for targeting and amplification are used, as promoting political ideas is not the same as promoting products. I think we all remember the Cambridge Analytica case and the scandal which was here in 2017. And I said those days, uh, this must not happen in Europe anymore. Uh, we have to protect the people against the abuse of their private data and against this uh, harmful uh, micro-targeting in order to influence their political decision-making in the elections. So this is what, what we try to do now by, by this legislation which we are preparing for, for the end of the year. The second uh, is the revision of the rules on the financing of uh, European political parties. The action plan also promotes civic engagement and active participation beyond elections. Uh, across the action plan, there is a strong emphasis on empowering citizens and civil society, including through increased funding. The Commission will continue to support democratic participation and civic engagement under a var variety of programs, be it Creative Europe or Horizon Europe, some of these will address in particular civic education for youth and children. And I am sure there will be also a space for uh, municipalities and the regions to get engaged and to, to uh, participate in these, in these programs. Now, disinformation, uh, which is an uh, important part of the European Democracy Action Plan, uh, to be precise, fight against disinformation. 
we see this uh, new, relatively new phenomenon uh, of uh, disinformation spread online as a substantial and ongoing threat to democracy, being used to divide the public in debates over policy, uh, to manipulate or suppress participation in electoral processes, and also to attack the legitimacy of democratic institutions. We are responding to the challenge in the European way. Uh, I will explain. For me, someone who experienced communist propaganda and censorship, the key challenge is how to fight against disinformation while fully preserve the freedom of speech. Freedom of expression and information and media freedom and pluralism are irreducible core values of the European Union. It is essential to keep a balanced approach, fully respecting democratic checks and balances. An effective response to disinformation also requires the involvement of all relevant partners, including industry, especially uh, the advertising industry and, and the digital industry. Then media, including traditional media, civil society, as well as public authorities, including, of course, regional and local authorities. One important element of countering disinformation is to address the role of online platforms. As announced in the Democracy Action Plan, we recently published guidance setting out how signatories of the Code of Practice against disinformation should strengthen the functioning of this code. And we published the guidance uh, some weeks ago, and in the guidance you will understand uh, from, from reading that, uh, you will understand that we want to make it whole of society uh, matter, that there will not be one ministry of truth, or I will not become the commissioner of truth. Uh, it's tempting. Uh, <laughs> but I told you I have my personal experience with living under the uh, one official doctrine of, of uh, communism, and uh, I can tell you, never more, never more in Europe. So this is how we see the, the proactive work against this information. It has to be also understood in line with uh, what's in the Digital Services Act with the Commission adopted in December last year where we propose binding and enforceable legal obligations for very large online platforms. Uh, it also sets out a co-regulatory framework to address systemic risks. So here I want to be well understood. Digital Services Act, are it's the legally binding set of, of a piece of legislation where we want to increase responsibility of platforms for the content, especially in relation to illegal content such as hate speech, terrorism and child pornography. And we are putting aside disinformation as harmful yet legal content. We are not covering uh, disinformation by the Digital Services Act, but we try to do it in a, in a uh, let's say, different uh, way, because as I said, we have to preserve the freedom of speech fully. Uh, we also need to make our education fit for digital reality. And local authorities and regional authorities can play an important role in media literacy efforts. So here I want to say to you that we count on, on your support for this, for this endeavor. Local authorities have been involved in many of the Commission's media literacy for all projects. So I believe we will, we will continue successfully this cooperation. Uh, media freedom and pluralism, very short, uh, short comment. Uh, we have found out that the media are under special distress not only in COVID time, uh, there are a lot of uh, attacks uh, against journalists. So we are proposing to increase their security and also increase their ability to, to uh, defend themselves against the abusive litigations. So a lot of uh, concrete actions proposed in the European Democracy Action Plan, uh, which seeks to protect elections, protect democratic processes, protect uh, a free democratic debate. 
which also be should be the case of the conference on the future of Europe, which was just presented by Gifr Hofstadt here. Uh, so I am fully uh, available for the debate, for your questions. But first of all, if you want to cooperate in protecting and defending Euro uh, European democracy, I am your person in the Commission. Uh, of course, all my colleagues are on board with me, but uh, you will find in me a very, very uh, agile and always enthusiastic cooperator when you come with ideas. By the way, I always say that everything important for politics I learned, I learned at municipal and regional level because these were my uh, beloved works uh, of, of my past. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Madam Vice President. What I would suggest to you is that now we'll have um, statements from all the political groups represented here at the Committee of the Regions. Then if you want to react to those uh, statements from political groups, and then we'll have debate with the floor. Or if you prefer, every intervention is from our side, and then you conclude. You let me know what you want to do, please. And now I will give the floor to um, Alexandra Dulkevich from the EPP for four minutes. You have the floor, madam. Right. Thank you. I was just looking for the speak button. <laughs> thank you very much. Mr. President, um, Madam President, thank you very much for this, uh, for this statement. We al already had a chance um, to discuss um, during the preparation of my opinion, which will I present just after this, this debate. We as a committee of region and uh, as a group of the European People's Party, uh, we are very much looking forward to this action plan but to the re-election plan um, and um, I'm really glad that um, Commission, different institution that uh, all of you, you are working on um, the real measures, real instruments that will uh, help us to survive, uh, to survive our democracy, to survive uh, the values on which the European Union is founded. Um, I'm also grateful for this, uh, what you have mentioned, never more living under one doctrine. Um, you said it as a, um, as a person from the Czech Republic, from the Czechoslovakia. Uh, I live in Poland, um, so uh, this is, those are the words with, which I also can uh, sign with my bo both hands coming back to the to the uh, european democracy action plan uh, we really need to um support with the real uh, instruments um the fight uh, against disinformation i'm not really quite sure uh, if this what you are preparing will be enough we will see, but uh, I, I don't uh, know if we have so much time um, to check it. Uh, thank you very much for the, um, uh, seeing the role uh, of the local and regional authorities um, as those uh, who are the most trusted and those who are uh, the closest to the, to the citizens. This is something what we as a um, EPP uh, group were really, really looking forward. Uh, union of the values, promoting of the um, citizens' participation, fighting with uh, um, disinformation, and first of all, this was already mentioned uh, today during the previous uh, previous both actually debates, uh, promoting education, promoting uh, critical thinking, promoting media literacy and education, not only at schools, but also education um, all over uh, to the people who are actually uh, 
really the one who can uh, not really know what to do and what is truth, what is not really true. Thank you very much. Um, and we are really looking forward to real action, real democracy action plan. And uh, we ha you have full our support. Thank you. Thank you. I will now give the floor. Uh, this was uh, Alexander Durkiewicz from the EPP. Now I will give the floor to Marie, uh, Marie Johansson from the PES for four minutes. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we cannot see you, but we can hear you. Okay. Uh, I will speak. I will uh, speak in Swedish, so I continue on that. Bästa do, kommissionen. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Bästa kommissionens vice ordförande Jorova. Tack för dina fina ord som du ändå förmedlar till oss och om det viktiga arbete som kommissionen utför. Det råder ingen tvekan om att den europeiska handlingsplanen för demokrati är ett värdefullt verktyg för att skydda den europeiska demokratin i den digitala tidsåldern. Medborgarna måste kunna delta i det demokratiska systemet genom ett välgrundat beslutsfattande och utan någon form av manipulering och olaglig inblandning. Våra demokratier måste bli mer motståndskraftiga och mediefriheten är särskilt viktig att skydda från illasinnade krafter. För hur många av oss trodde för 6-7 år sedan att så kallade booth, det vill säga välja profilering med hjälp av artificiell intelligens, skulle kunna skada oss och våra demokratier? Nu är vi alla medvetna om effekterna av cyberbuggning och desinformation i utövandet av våra funktioner i våra städer och regioner. Detta är en skrämmande utveckling. Den sprider sig som en gräsbrand genom Europa. PS-gruppen vill också betona att inblandningen i våra demokratiska liv inte bara rör valprocesser. Den ifrågasätter också våra europeiska värderingar och syftar till att påverka både ideologiska och etiska debatter i våra samhällen. Och förutom allt detta har pandemin inte bara haft enorma social, socioekonomiska konsekvenser utan också betydande politisk inverkan som skadat medborgarnas förtroende för beslutsfattarna. Då många impopulära men nödvändiga beslut som fattas för att skydda folkhälsan i Europa har genomförts. Samtidigt som pandemin har vi då levt med desinformation och konspirationsteorier. Och dessa undergräver ju naturligtvis våra demokratier. De skadar våra gemensamma värden och påverkar våra intressen och de till och med kan äventyra våra liv. Vi kan inte ta demokratin för given. Demokrati kräver att vi tillsammans står upp för den varje minut, ja varje sekund. Och det är därför som utövandet av rätten att ställa upp i val och att rösta måste främjas. Och underlättas framför allt. Och även då för personer som faktiskt är bosatta i en annan medlemsstat. Insatserna för europeisk demokrati måste omfatta åtgärder för att öka väljarnas deltagande på alla förvaltningsnivåer, men också deras delaktighet i ett gemensamt Europa. Det är viktigt att återknyta kontakter med medborgarna på gräsrotsnivå och då är de lokala och regionala myndigheterna avgörande för att nå dit. Vi vill ha ett fortsatt levande demokrati i Europa och det måste vi göra tillsammans. Tack för ordet. Thank you. Now for Renew Europe, I'll give the floor to François de Coster for three minutes. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Premier Vice-président. Marie Johansson vient de nous le rappeler avec force. La démocratie mérite qu'on se batte pour elle à chaque instant. Parce que la démocratie, elle se construit, elle prend du temps pour être consolidée. Mais malheureusement, et Madame la vice-présidente, vous le savez sans doute mieux que moi, elle peut disparaître en un instant. Il y a quelques semaines, à peine, avec 
mes collègues euh, maires libéraux, nous avons accueilli euh, la vice-présidente euh, Vera Jourova pour une, et un échange sur un certain nombre de décisions prises par des autorités locales et régionales d'un État membre euh, considérant qu'il était important euh, de mettre en exergue euh, la, les personnes euh, homosexuelles. Il y a eu euh, d'ores et déjà de nombreuses euh, prises de position et des positions courageuses euh, prises par la Commission européenne, par euh, sa présidente, pour euh, expliquer d'abord euh, les valeurs sur lesquelles était fondée l'Union européenne et pour enclencher un processus dans lequel euh, une première étape de dialogue pouvait être suivie de euh, sanctions. Eh bien, je suis au regret de constater que quelques semaines après cet échange que nous avons eu, Madame la vice-présidente, c'est un, dans un autre État membre qu'une fois encore, les valeurs de l'Union européenne sont bafouées. Et je ne veux pas d'une Union européenne qui soit faible. Je ne veux pas d'une Union européenne qui soit résumée finalement à un budget. Non, nous avons construit l'Union européenne parce que nous voulions défendre la démocratie et toutes les valeurs qu'elle porte. Et s'attaquer aux valeurs de la démocratie, c'est s'attaquer à la démocratie elle-même, directement. Alors, euh, les paroles des pères fondateurs euh, de, du projet européen doivent résonner aujourd'hui plus que comme des souvenirs ou des mémoires, mais comme des avertissements. Car s'éloigner des valeurs qui ont fondé l'Union européenne, qui euh, fonde le projet européen depuis... Euh, des décennies, eh bien, c'est se mettre en risque de revivre les noirceurs du passé européen. Et notre continent doit le s'en souvenir. Alors tout à l'heure, avec Marguerite Iskinas, votre collègue de la Commission européenne, nous avons évoqué le mode de vie européen et combien il était important qu'il s'inscrive aussi dans l'éducation. Eh bien moi, je crois qu'il y a un certain nombre de dirigeants qu'il faudrait éduquer avant de penser à éduquer nos concitoyens et nos plus jeunes enfants c'est que quand on signe des traités internationaux, on les respecte et que l'Union européenne elle est fondée sur un traité international et que nous devons faire tout ce qui est dans ce traité international pour sanctionner et sanctionner rapidement les dirigeants qui bafouent les euh, valeurs qui sont des engagements qui ont été contractés dans ces traités internationaux. Et je sais, Madame la vice-présidente, pouvoir compter sur votre énergie pour pouvoir faire respecter ces engagements et ainsi défendre notre démocratie et ses valeurs. Je vous remercie. Thank you. Now for ECR, I'll give the floor to Matteo Bianchi for two and a half minutes. Grazie Presidente, caro Commissario, il nostro gruppo al Comitato delle Regioni sostiene gli sforzi della Commissione Europea volti a garantire elezioni eque e a rafforzare la libertà di espressione. La proposta della Commissione Europea relativa a un piano d'azione per la democrazia europea contiene una serie di richieste pertinenti anche se alcune di esse necessitano ancora di ulteriori eh, chiarimenti. In primo luogo come gruppo ICR siamo d'accordo sul fatto che bisogna salvaguardare al meglio le elezioni che si tengono negli Stati membri da qualsiasi tipo di interferenza. Questo tema ci interessa direttamente in quanto rappresentanti eletti a livello locale e regionale, dato che in molti paesi spetta proprio a noi il compito di organizzare le elezioni e garantire la sicurezza. Pensiamo che le elezioni debbano essere protette in modo particolare, Negli ultimi mesi a Bruxelles si è molto discusso della necessità di ampliare il novero delle infrastrutture critiche. Potrebbe essere giunto il momento di ampliare l'ambito di ciò che intendiamo con questo concetto e di considerare quindi infrastrutture critiche anche i processi elettorali. In secondo luogo, per quanto riguarda la proposta della Commissione europea in materia di mezzi di informazione, tutti noi desideriamo che il pubblico abbia accesso a un'offerta più ampia possibile di fonti indipendenti, di sinistra, di destra, liberali, conservatrici e quant'altro. Quando passano da un'edicola o guardano la televisione, gli europei devono sentire di avere un'ampia scelta in fatto di mezzi di informazione. Un altro punto importante della proposta della Commissione è che sia eh, le autorità dell'Unione Europea che quelle degli Stati membri 
comprese quelle locali e regionali, dovranno sviluppare la loro capacità di individuare e analizzare la disinformazione. La lotta contro la disinformazione è diventata particolarmente importante in questi mesi e possiamo senz'altro affermare che oggi alla pandemia di coronavirus si accompagna una pandemia di disinformazione. Concludo, Presidente, signora Commissaria, mi consenta di fare riferimento alla parte della proposta della Commissione relativa a un piano d'azione per la democrazia europea che mi lascia francamente perplesso. Si tratta della parte che riguarda il ruolo della Commissione europea nello sviluppo dei principi del giornalismo. Non si tratta di una materia che dovrebbe essere lasciata alle organizzazioni di categoria degli stessi giornalisti ed essere essenzialmente oggetto di autodisciplina. La lascio con questa domanda e grazie. Thank you. Now for EA, I'll give the floor to Joseph Kobor for two minutes. Dear Commissioner, dear colleagues, we all agree, and it has been repeated many times, that we need to bring Europe closer to people, which is also the number one political priority of the Committee of the Regions. Uh, the Conference of the Future of Europe is a great opportunity to do that. It has to be a truly transparent, democratic, broad, decentralized and inclusive exercise. If not, it can be hit back on uh, all of us. Uh, we count on you, dear Commissioner, uh, make sure it doesn't happen. The problem is today that uh, people feel distant from their elected representatives. The success of fake news disinformation is uh, a consequence and symptom of this. We should develop a positive narrative with our own citizens and re-establish the broken connections with them. If there is trust between us and the citizens, no foreign power on internal or internal authoritarian ambition or business ambition will be able to break Europe. And one concrete way to doing that is establishing a permanent dialogue with citizens led by local and regional authorities. The proposal was put forward in the opinion of my colleague, Declan McDonnell from the EI, which was, was, was adopted anonymously in this house. In short, we need a strong, a credible narrative, a list of concrete actions, and constantly open two-way lines of communications with citizens. Thank you. Thank you. And now for the Greens, I give the floor to Satu Apanen for two minutes. Arvoisa puheenjohtaja, ehkä kuvani näkyy hieman väärinpäin ainakin omalla kameralla, mutta toivottavasti puhe kuuluu. Arvoisa komissaari, on hyvä, että demokratiatoimintasuunnitelma vahvistaa demokratian peruskiviä, vaalien luotettavuutta, tiedotusvälineiden vapautta ja väärän tiedon torjumista. Nämä ovat edellytykset kansalaisten luottamuksen säilyttämiselle demokratiaa kohtaan. Tulisi kuitenkin miettiä, miten demokratiaa ja osallisuutta vahvistetaan arjessa. Äänestysaktiivisuus on monessa maassa tällä hetkellä, myös maassa, niin Suomessa viime kuntavaaleissa äänestysaktiivisuus oli todella alhainen. Niin alhainen, että se oli viimeksi 40-luvulla yhtä alhainen. Tässä työssä, hyvä komissaari, Demokratian vahvistamisessa alueiden komitea on teille ja komissiolle mitä oivallisin työkalu. Alueiden komitea sitä olisi hyödyntää paremmin paikallisia alueviranomaisten roolia. Esimerkiksi Sivex-valiokunnassa siellä todettiin maaliskuussa, että demokratiatoimintasuunnitelman olisi johdettava konkreettisten toimien määrittelyyn. Arvoisa komissaari, Myöskin alue- ja paikallisviranomaisten tietämys perusoikeuskirjasta on hyvin vähäistä. Esitänkin, että siirrymme ja hyödynnätte alueiden komiteaa ja esimerkiksi seuraaviin konkreettisiin toimenpiteisiin. Sat miljoona vaaleilla valittua paikallista poliitikkoa voivat järjestää tilaisuuksia eri teemoista demokratiakeskusteluja. Nuorten politiikkakoulu voisi olla yksi eurooppalainen aloite. 
Myöskin toivon, että komissio tutkii tarkasti Rova Dulkievicin lausunnon, jossa esitetään konkreettisia toimenpiteitä, kuten myös herra Van Raistin lausunnon peruskirjasta. Lopuksi demokratiakeskustelut pitää saada osaksi kansalaisten arkea julistetuksi osaksi arjen politiikkaa. Tässä työssä alueiden komitean jäsen ja miljoona valittua aluepäättäjää voivat olla apunanne. Kiitos. Thank you. And this concludes the statements from the political groups. I have the information, Madam Vice President, that you would like to react to those statements now, and then uh, we'll have the interventions from the floor. Madam Vice President, you have the floor. Thank you very much, and, and thank you for all your uh, comments and interventions. Uh, uh, they were all very, very straight to the point, and, and I am I'm really also inspired and, and happy to react on some, some of them. Madame Dulkevich, indeed, we met recently. We discussed uh, that uh, the key for distribution of EU money should not be the political key, but the key of the needs and efficiency and value for money. So this was, I think, also very, very important debate we had with, with the, and the Commission is, is working with, with, the, with the, the conclusions of this debate. But coming back to your comments, uh, uh, you said that uh, whether it will be enough, uh, 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 what is in ADAP, uh, we believe that uh, we have designed good proposals uh, uh, which uh, indeed have to be implemented in full. So it must not uh, remain the, to, to be the, just the paperwork. And I think that we have both very, very same uh, equal or, or similar instinct uh, coming, having also the background or spending our young years <laughs> in communist regime that uh, there, there are a lot of things to, to, to ha which have to be done. Also lessons learned from, from that regime where there was just one doctrine. And one important thing that uh, the key thing is education, which, which you mentioned yourself. And we sometimes neglect this line of education because this is long distance run uh, and uh, it is a mistake. So we have to focus more on that. Also, we are uh, preparing or, or already running some, some funding programs uh, from the EU, EU side. Especially what is worrying me is how easy it is to misinterpret the recent history. And uh, it was also the case uh, of disinformation spread in Poland. Uh, the, uh, the disinformation about the Molotov-Ribbentrop uh, uh, agreement. How easy it was to brainwash the people again about this and to make the Polish, uh, 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 po uh, Poland the, the perpetrator instead of telling the people the truth that they, they were the victims. So I, I, I was really shocked and we have to uh, push the ministries of education in the EU states to focus on the modern history and on the lessons which we have to take uh, and learn from the 20th century especially. Madame Johansson, uh, profiling uh, is an issue. We are addressing it in the legislation on artificial intelligence. And one general comment, technologies must not turn against the people. That's why everything we do, all the rules we are bringing for this technological world, we have this human-centric approach that we, uh, we must not allow the technologies, including artificial intelligence, to copy-paste uh, the, the biases and uh, uh, and. Uh, unfair uh, things from real life into the, this, this uh, technological uh, sphere. So we need indeed, as you said, the, the debate in Europe about all these things. We have to uh, focus on uh, uh, many, many things which you mentioned. Uh, uh, you said that the people go to the elections and they should be active uh, in between elections, uh, which, which is also my, my strong conviction. And one interesting thing which I noticed at the municipal and regional level, there are, I think, no issues with the rule of law uh, because the people are watching. Uh, people have this under control what you are doing. 
<laughs> so uh, it is important that the people are, are active and that they are not only asked to be active when they are coming uh, to, to, to elections. I know I speak too long, don't I? Uh, I am I'm watching you, Mr. Mr. Vice President. I will, no, be, that's good. I will be short. Uh, uh, Mr. De Costa, uh, yes, uh, we are focusing on the holy trinity of values, rule of law, fundamental rights and democracy. It was never before when I came to the commission in, the, in 2014, we really in a big naivety, we, we, we thought that we will have these values protected automatically. This is not the true anymore. And uh, we really try in the commission to come with the measures and with the plans which will invite the whole society because uh, I must not be the lonely sheriff in that which, which uh, political wrote about me some time ago. No, we need to, uh, to connect forces because uh, we, if we want democracy to survive, uh, we have all to do our homeworks. And you, you know better than me what it means on, on a regional level. Uh, Mr. Bianchi, uh, yes, uh, elections, it's the member state uh, competence. However, we created a network uh, with the member states. We are discussing the matters of cybersecurity mainly and data protection. And uh, we believe that uh, with the, uh, we uh, have a problem if in several member states, we will see that elections are not free and fair anymore. We will have problem of, uh, in, in, in Europe on European Union level. So that's why the cooperation here is key. On journalism, I agree with you that they should regulate themselves. We are not touching that at all. But we believe that, that we have to create conditions for media to work, uh, being economically fit and being safe. I think these are our our uh, obligations to guarantee that. Mr. Kobor, uh, I fully agree, we need positive, uh, well, not maybe positive narrative. We have to, we, we must stop to be lazy in communicating what we are doing. Because if we leave the space un, un, uh, uh, open, it will be uh, uh, filled in by, by disinformation. We saw it in COVID. Uh, that's why we were encouraging the health authorities to uh, inform more, to use the priority space created by Facebook and other networks because we were pushing them to do so and to fill in the space. Otherwise, of course, the disinformation will be over flooding uh, every, every free space which we leave for them. So uh, we need to, out of respect for the citizens, to communicate better and to, to tell them the truth, know the pink, the, the rosy pictures, yeah? And I, I think that we have to start uh, to count this disinformation as a, as a new phenomenon, uh, which cannot be fought by censorship, but which has also to be fought by proactive communication, uh, uh, respecting the citizens' right to, to information. Last comment on Madam Hapanen. Uh, 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 you are absolutely right. Uh, the election participation is low. Uh, we have to attract the attention of people. Uh, well, sometimes when people fear about their future, it makes them to move and go to the elections. I don't think this is a good plan and good program. But I think that we should also think about the method we use for elections. And here comes what I said before, that we should digitalize democracy. I am true believer in uh, opening the e-voting systems so that the young people are more attracted, uh, so that we organize the elections in the way they are used to and uh, to make it closer for them, uh, uh, not to push them to use the old fashioned method to take the paper and go to, to throw it to, to a box. So. Uh, uh, one, one proposal for where we could cooperate further 
because you said the Co Committee of Regions sh was not brought enough on board and there the should be uh, more opportunities to have a factual debate. Uh, I think the recovery plans contain a lot of very useful uh, projects and, and pr programs not to leave the people behind, uh, not to increase the gaps in the society. Uh, the money should help to, to take people with us for fresh and healthy recovery. And I think that here we can, we can cooperate. I would really like to see your projects and, and your proposals, how to do this. Uh, to, to help the people to get out of the recovery and to use also the European European support uh, for that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Now we'll have the interventions from the floor. We invite you to stay with us and I'll give the floor to Franz Schausberger for one minute. Ja, sehr geehrte Frau Vizepräsidentin, ein solcher Aktionsplan hat über die Grenzen der EU hinaus Bedeutung. Insbesondere die sechs Westbalkanstaaten sollten bereits in diesen Aktionsplan in irgendeiner Form aufgenommen werden, um die Demokratie bei ihnen weiterzuentwickeln und sie fit für einen Beitritt zu machen. Gerade in den Bereichen Rechtsstaatlichkeit, Stärkung der demokratischen Institutionen, der Zivilgesellschaft, Unabhängigkeit der Medien, Kampf der Korruption sind ja leider nur zögerliche Fortschritte zu verzeichnen, sodass noch viele Reformen notwendig sind. Dabei spielen die regionalen und lokalen Gebietskörperschaften eine wichtige Rolle und ich meine, ihre Kapazitäten müssen gestärkt werden. Nach dem Fortschrittsbericht wurden im Bereich der Meinungsfreiheit und Unabhängigkeit der Medien in letzter Zeit leider die geringsten Fortschritte erzielt. Es bedarf weiterer Bemühungen, um die Unabhängigkeit der öffentlich-rechtlichen Medien zu gewährleisten und die Transparenz der öffentlichen und privaten Finanzierung der Medien zu fördern. Wir dürfen aber nicht nur das sehen, was noch fehlt, sondern es sollten auch die Fortschritte anerkannt werden. Das trägt sicherlich zur Motivation für weitere Reformen bei. Thank you, sir. Now the floor to Dirk Vedel for one minute. Vielen Dank, Herr Präsident. Sehr geehrte Frau Vizepräsidentin, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, ich möchte mich auf einen Aspekt beschränken, nämlich auf den Aspekt einer funktionierenden Gewaltenteilung für eine funktionierende Demokratie. Und ich glaube, es ist insbesondere doch ganz klar, dass ein starker Rechtsstaat unabhängige Gerichte das Fundament einer starken Demokratie sind. Als Staatssekretär im Ministerium der Justiz von Nordrhein-Westfalen beschäftige ich mich tagtäglich mit der Stärkung des Rechtsstaats. Wir haben beispielsweise den sogenannten Pakt für den Rechtsstaat zwischen Bund und Ländern in Nordrhein-Westfalen auch schon übererfüllt. In Nordrhein-Westfalen begrüßen wir deswegen die beispiellosen Schritte der Kommission, um auf Rechtsstaatsverstöße zu reagieren. Und die Rechtsstaatlichkeitsberichte sind unseres Erachtens ein ganz wichtiges Element des europäischen Werkzeugkastens. Da werden aber unserer Meinung nach auch weitere Schritte noch notwendig sein, denn Demokratie, Rechtsstaatlichkeit und Achtung der Grundrechte sind in Europa nicht verhandelbar. Vielen Dank. Grazie Vicepresidente. L'Europa che oggi noi viviamo è nata come risposta alla crisi che il continente ha vissuto nella prima metà del Novecento. Anche in occasione di crisi successive come la fine della Guerra Fredda l'Europa ha saputo dare risposte politiche forti e oggi la crisi si chiama Covid. La risposta della Commissione è importante sia sotto il profilo delle politiche, il Next Generation EU, sotto il, e che sotto appunto il profilo degli strumenti finanziari. Ma questa risposta oggi deve accompagnarsi anche ad un rafforzamento sotto il profilo democratico, creando un nuovo rapporto con la cittadinanza. Per questo serve coraggio, un nuovo slancio democratico che parta dal basso. In questi mesi di Covid i comuni e le amministrazioni locali sono stati un punto di riferimento importante per i cittadini, 
anche sotto il profilo dell'informazione corretta. L'istituzione locale è la prima stazione della democrazia. Per questo chiediamo che nel piano d'azione per la democrazia in Europa, come nella COFOI, ci sia un pieno coinvolgimento delle autonomie locali. Tramite questo possiamo dare un contributo ad avvicinare i cittadini all'Europa. Grazie. Dear Commissioner, I'm going to use a metaphor to present my uh, point of view. Democracy is like uh, cycling, going by bike. You have to pedal continuously not to fall off the bike. The same is true for democracy. To be effective and successful, democracy must be exercised every day and by everyone. Democracy needs the participation of the ordinary heroes our citizens and every day. So, dear Commissioner, I just want to underline the role of local and uh, regional authorities in promoting and protecting European democracy. Why? Because in the end, all democracy is local. As a conclusion, the best democracy action plan is the action. Action accordingly with the needs and expectations of our citizens in a very functional Europe. Thank you, dear Commissioner. Thank you. Now the floor to Mr. Adam Karakzoni for one minute. Tisztelt alelnök asszony, Magyarországról jövök, ahol három évvel ezelőtt a választók harmadjára hatalmazták fel kétharmados többséggel Orbán Viktort az ország vezetésére, és a két évvel ezelőtti önkormányzati választásokat is minden megyében az Orbán Viktor vezette pártszövetség nyerte. Ön tehát alelnök asszony több millió magyar ember sértett meg nemrégiben tett kijelentésével, mi szerint mi Magyarországon beteg demokráciát építünk. Nem erről van szó. Csupán arról van szó, hogy a magyar választók pontosan tudják, hogy mit akarnak és mit nem akarnak. Mi nem akarunk migránsokat, nem akarunk multikulturalizmust, nem estünk LMBTQ őrületbe, viszont támogatjuk a gyermeket vállaló családokat, védjük Európa keresztény hagyományait, és tiszteljük a nemzetek szuverenitását. Tudom, hogy ez önnek és az ön főnökeinek nem tetszik, de ettől függetlenül önöknek, liberálisoknak is tiszteletben kell lenni tartaniuk a nem liberálisok jogait és véleményét, nem pedig kettős mércével mérni, ahogyan azt teszi. Hogyan fordulhat elő az például, hogy az ön elbarátai vezető politikusokként olyat mondanak, hogy ki kell éheztetni Magyarországot és Lengyelországot, vagy hogy térdre kell kényszeríteni Magyarországot. Persze mindezt ugye csak is a közös európai értékeink nevében. De kérdez, kérdezhetném azt is, hogy mikor ön és a bizottság ugyanolyan vehemenciával fellépni a nemzeti kisebbségekért, például a határon túli magyarokért, vagy épp az európai cigányokért, mint az LMBTQ emberekért, vagy éppen a migránsokért. Ezekre kérni válaszát. Thank you. Now the floor to uh, Patrick Schwartz Kiefer. One minute. Danke schön, zegérte a prezident, zegérte a frau viceprezident. Die Stärkung demokratischer Institutionen und dadurch die Demokratie in der EU ist eine Zielsetzung, die für die Zukunft Europas so relevant ist. Deshalb freue ich mich, dass dieser Aktionsplan auf den Tisch gelegt wurde. Ich bringe immer Beispiele aus meiner Region und das tue ich auch in diesem Fall. Zu den fairen und freien Wahlen eine kurze Geschichte. In Ungarn kann es vorkommen, dass jemand in einer Kleingemeinde zum Bürgermeister gewählt wird, weil Wähler davor Angst haben, dass sie später kein Brot im örtlichen Geschäft kaufen können, falls sie nicht den erwähnten Kandidaten unterstützen, da die Frau dieses Kandidats die Besitzerin des Geschäfts ist. Traurig, dass sowas im 21. Jahrhundert in Europa vorkommen kann. Es ist auch traurig, dass weder die Bürgerinnen und Bürger noch die örtlichen Politiker über eine infrastrukturelle Investition genügende Informationen bekommen. Das ist der Fall bei uns in dem Komitat Baronja Branau, wo eine wichtige Autobahnstrecke unter anderem von internationalen Konzernen Strabag gebaut wird, wo sich die Kosten eines erbauten Kilometers auf der ungarischen Seite auf das rund Vierfache der über die ziemlich gleichen, gleichen geografischen Eigenschaften verfügenden Strecke in Kroatien jenseits der Stadt ganz zerlaufen. Und eine zufriedenstellende Auskunft hierzu gibt niemand. 
Diese fehlende Transparenz macht auch die Distanz zwischen Politikern und Wählern noch größer. Vielen Dank. Thank you. And finally the floor to Josef Vereni. You have the floor for one minute. Thank you very much. Madam Vice President, uh, I, you have my full support uh, in the fight against disinformation, hoaxes and conspiracies. We in Slovakia have also a problem with these issues. However, I would like also ask you uh, about the protection of traditional, traditional national minorities inside the European Union. As we know, there is no legal binding document which would protect the traditional, traditional national minorities. The Minority Safe Pack initiative has been rejected by the Commission. So therefore, my question is that do you see any room in the future that there will be uh, adopted a legal uh, instrument protecting the tra traditional national minorities and are you ready to cooperate in this? Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any other requests for the floor. So, Madam Vice President, I will give you the floor with the indicative time of five minutes, please. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, First Vice President. I have to apologize to Mr. Scheusberger because I uh, had some technical problem with interpretation here. So I, I know he spoke about the media uh, mainly, but my German is is not is not good enough to to be able to to react. Uh, but I, I will react on maybe uh, the, the following following comments. Uh, maybe not attributing it to concrete concrete speakers. Uh, I am dealing with uh, the values. Uh, and yeah, you can imagine it's not ticking the boxes. This is done, this is done, this is done. As an executive person, which also uh, I, I learned and I so much loved uh, in working for municipality and the region, you can imagine that sometimes the work is maybe not frustrating, but really very demanding. Because when you work on on values like rule of law, fundamental rights, and democracy, uh, the work is never finished. And and you, several of you, rightly said that uh, it is the matter for everyday work, and we have to uh, find new ways how to protect these these values because. Uh, we see new ways of endangering them, uh, especially when, when it comes to the modern technologies and uh, the modern ways how to uh, uh, try to devastate uh, European democratic system. So uh, I, I just want to say that the Commission and myself uh, are doing uh, everything which is uh, within the legal competencies uh, to protect uh, the, also the rule of law, which, which was mentioned here, and the fundamental rights, including the rights of the, of the minorities. Not all the uh, problems uh, in the field of rule of law can be solved through infringement procedures. This is the obligation of the Commission to launch such procedure when we see that there is a legal basis and there is a breach of EU law. Uh, but we try also to run the, the dialogue with the member states and we try to uh, introduce new instruments such as the rule of law report, uh, uh, which is annual report covering all the member states. By the way, the, the new one will be published on the 20th of, of July. And uh, as I said, this is the work for, for all the layers. Uh, I'll be happy to cooperate more with uh, the Committee of Regions because when I am listening to you, I think that maybe it was also my uh, fault that uh, we didn't have enough con uh, contacts in the past uh, on, on such important matters uh, which we are discussing today. So as I said before, now the post-COVID time will be very demanding we need to use the recovery funding in the proper way. It will be under incredible time pressure because the money has to be invested till 2026. And I am sure that uh, the local and, and regional uh, authorities will be fully involved in, uh, in uh, these investments, which should go to the, to the benefit of the, of the citizens. So again, I'm, I'm fully available. Uh, uh, for, for such such cooperation, uh, 
uh, yes, uh, Mr. Bok said it. Uh, you have to pedal all the time uh, to protect uh, democracy. I have on my on my wall behind me Václav Havel, the, the Czech president, and he always said that democracy is so uneasy for those who take it seriously, and so easy for those who want to uh, just. Uh, neglect it or abuse it. So I think this is this is clear. Mr. Karachani, uh, sorry for maybe wrong pronunciation. Yes, I, I said that uh, I see ill democracy in Hungary because uh, it was in the context of the debate also about the health issues. And I said that uh, when in a body something is not functioning well, we, we see that uh, the body is ill. And what I see uh, as, a, as a problematic uh, issue in, in Hungary is if, especially the media and the pressure on the, on the free media. And also recently, the, I think the, the shameful law on, uh, which is stigmatizing uh, LGBT people, uh, these are all uh, and several others from the past, I don't want to repeat it, uh, all, all signs that, well, uh, that there is something which uh, uh, is deviating from the from the mainstream of the European values. And I, I use the word, main, word mainstream now. <laughs> I want to be well understood. We have the European values enshrined in the treaty in the Article 2, and this is the rule of law principle and anti-discrimination and speech. <clears throat> and I think that we have to act uh, when uh, we see that the country is is uh, uh, going in a in a in a direction which we find wrong and which we find uh, deviating too far from from the the basic basic pillars. But Mr. Karachoni uh, and Mr. Boreni, oh, sorry, I don't have glasses. <laughs> Boreni, uh, you will be surprised how often. I defend, especially the countries from Central and Eastern Europe. How often I say that there cannot be expectations that these countries will just imitate the West in everything. You would be surprised how often I defend your right to say things freely about your priorities and your values. But forgive me, uh, I would not be uh, at the right place if not defending uh, the values like uh, protection of, of minorities and uh, protection against discrimination and protection of independent judiciary and so on. Last comment on uh, the minority safe pack. Yes, I know there was a huge disappointment of the signatories uh, about the decision of the Commission not to react by adopting legislation, but, but we really did a thorough assessment of what legislation we have and what, what measures we can apply already now, and that it's better to, to implement and, and uh, in, do in full and use the rules and, and the conditions and pro also funding programs we have now in hands to also promote the the uh, language minorities, because this is about languages mainly and about the, also traditions, uh, to, to use the current uh, rules and, and instruments rather than promising the, the future legislation, which according to my colleagues who are dealing with these subjects uh, uh, is, is not necessary. But you ask whether there is an opportunity to open it again. I think that there is now opportunity under the Conference on the Future of Europe to, to, to raise again the, the, these issues and that you, you find it uh, important to strengthen the protection. So this is, this is not closed door forever, but uh, as I said, uh, we did a thorough analysis and assessment and we came to the conclusion that we already have sufficient instruments now in hands. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Madam, you, Madam Vice, Vice President. Thank you so much for being here with us and for taking the time to uh, debate with us uh, the European, European Action Plan for uh, Democracy. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate your presence and we appreciate taking the time. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, members, we will proceed to point 